All right, welcome back. Take a look at this linear programming question from May 2012, question nine. You could pause the video, watch it, take it in, everything. All right, so the first thing I advise you to do in this question is to highlight what you're calling roses and what you're calling orchids. So X is roses. What we know with this math, have we? All right, so X is roses and Y are the orchids, right? Um, now we are about to do part one where we are asked to list three inequalities for the constraints given. This is the part that types people up. So you need to watch those constraints that were given and come up with some nice healthy um, inequalities. So let's see if we can go through. Now keep in mind, if you if you look at question two, at part two, which I told you to do, look at all the parts of the question. If you look at part two, you'll see an answer sheet provided. Shade the region of the graph which represents the solution set for the inequalities, blah, 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 blah. So on the answer sheet, they're actually giving you some equations of lines which will correspond to the inequalities that you're about to do now. So you could go and look at the answer sheet where they gave you the equations and use that. But there is the chance that you'll have to create the inequalities without any help. So let's do that. The first constraint says the number of orchids must be at least half the number of roses. The number of orchids must be at least half. So the number of orchids, that's one. The number of orchids, y, must be at least half, at least half, so it can be greater. And at least half so it can be half so let's put an equal sign so the number of orchids must be at least half the number of roses half the number of roses so y is greater than or equal to half x nice next one there must be at least two roses that's simple the number of roses must be greater than or equal to two there must be at least two roses Third one, there must, be, there must be no more than 12 flowers. So you can't exceed 12 flowers. So flowers, roses, and orchids are flowers, right? So, well, I'm sorry if you didn't know that orchids is a flower in this question. Yeah, dog's dead. But the number of flowers, X plus Y, must be what? No more than 12. It can be 12, but it can be more than 12. So that's an X equal to as well. X plus Y must be less than or equal to 12. So these are the three inequalities, three marks for that. If you get skilled at this, you can whip all them three marks quick. All right, so we need to transfer this information here onto the graph. Now, for the exam, they gave you the lines, but there is the chance that they could not give you the lines, so I'm gonna pretend like they didn't give me the lines, so I'm gonna show you how to get these lines, right? So why is, uh, I need some people. For the first inequality, why is, greater than or equal to a half x. That means we can consider that the line as y is equal to a half x. This is the line y is equal to a half x. So anytime any value x is, y is a half of that. So I, I, could, I could say like, I don't even need to plug in values, but you can. So for any value of x, y is gonna be a half of it. So I could, I could try values like four, two, and maybe eight, four, because y is always a half of x and you can actually plug it in and verify those values so if i simply plot those points four two all right this one was a little off it should have been more like here so sorry about that and eight four eight four let me just work with that now this line would resemble something that looks like this the second equation x is greater than 2 I should get something that looks like this because I'm gonna draw any line where x is equal to 2 all along and for the third line x plus y is less than or equal to 12 you know I could just connect the two 12s to each other um, so 12 to 12 gives me something that resembles that 
All right, so that's how you get the lines based off of the inequalities. If you replace the inequalities by an equal sign, you'll be able to deduce which line that you need to draw. Now, just to select the region which we must shade that satisfies all the inequalities, y must be greater than this. So this, this, this line here stands for y is equal to half x. This line here is x plus y is equal to 12 and this line here is x is equal to 2. So if I wanted to satisfy all these inequalities, the first one, line number one, I need to be greater than this line. So everything that's above the black line, we want that. So I'm not going to shade it right now because I need to check the others. x must also be greater than 2. So I want everything that's to the right of the purple line. So it must be above the black line and to the right of the purple line. And I can already see that most likely it's going to be under the orange line as well. So x plus y must be less than 12, so it's under. So using the less than or greater than, I can deduce which ones I need to shade. Now you could just use your ruler to get a nice little hat shade. And don't need to overdo the shading. Okay. So with that, you would have completed part two. Now we need to state the coordinates of the vertices for part three. State the coordinates of the points which represent the vertices. The vertices is this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here. So the vertices are represented by 2, 10. Now, my graph is a little sketchy, right? This is 10. And this would be 2, 1. And finally, or across here, we expect an 8, 4. So that's another one mark. Now this is the part this is the part of the question that's really interesting. The florist sells a bouquet of flowers to make a profit three dollars and each rose, four dollars and each orchid. Determine the maximum possible profit on the sale of a bouquet. So these were the vertices of the wanted region, the shaded region, and we need to determine the maximum profit. So what you need to do is generate an, what I will call the profit equation based on what they gave us. So three dollars on each row, so three by x plus four dollars on each orchid, four by y is equal to something, maximum profit. That is equal to the profit. So so watch what happens here every time. You're going to take these values and substitute it into this equation and see which one will generate the most. Which one will generate the most profit. I can already see that this is out. He's not going to make the cut. That, those numbers are just too small. And if you remember, that's the point on the lower end of the graph. But these two, we're not too sure about it. It's a little hard to watch and just deduce it. So let's just um, substitute it in and see when for the two... 10 vertices, let's see, 3 by 2 plus 4 by 10, that is equal to 46. And for the 8, 4 vertex, I should say, vertex is singular, 3 by 8 plus 4 by 4, so 3 by 8, so 3 8 is 24, plus 4 by 4 is 16, so this is going to give us 40. So we can see here the best, the best setup is this one where we have two roses because X represent roses and 10 orchids. Maximum profit will be generated from this. All right, so you'll just write that here. That here maximum profit is equal to $46. Also, I'm seeing that this is three marks in the exam. So a lot of marks come on working out this. So you know what? I wouldn't have crossed at this point. I would have shown that this point substituted doesn't generate as much as these as well. Just to make sure I don't lose out any of those beautiful three marks. In the question, we weren't asked what number of roses or what number of orchids to use. But if they do ask and they can sometimes, you would have just simply said the one the the vertex he used right so the number of roses would have been two and the number of orchids would be ten so any questions if you want me to do a next question if it's confusing watch it over again see any questions you have any concerns just let me know until next time keep grinding